So, um, Secretary Esper, dear Mark, uh, welcome back to NATO headquarters. It's great to see you so a few days after we met virtually at uh, NATO Defence Ministers. And uh, thank you for your <coughs> strong commitment uh, to NATO and also many thanks uh, 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 for the vital contribution of the United States to our shared uh, security. Uh, we have uh, many issues to discuss. Our preparations uh, to deal with a possible second wave of uh, COVID-19 are on track with an operation plan, uh, a stockpile of medical equipment and more uh, funding. Across the lines, our armed forces uh, have been supporting civilian efforts day and night. Our countries must continue to invest uh, to keep them strong and ensure that this health crisis does not turn into a security crisis. Because the security challenges we faced before the pandemic have not disappeared. <clears throat> we are working together uh, on a balanced response to Russia's new missiles. Uh, which are dangerous and destabilizing. We welcome the talks between the United States and Russia on arms control, and we agree that as a rising global power, it is high time for China to take part in global arms control. At last week's Defense Ministerial meeting, we also discussed um, U.S. military presence uh, in Europe, particularly in light of the U.S. plan to reduce its presence in Germany. I welcome that the United States is consulting with allies while making clear that the U.S. commitment to European security remains strong. In recent years, the United States has been increasing its military presence in Europe, leading the NATO battle group in Poland, present in Romania and Norway, and with ballistic missile defense capable destroyers in Spain. The U.S. military presence in Europe is important for Europe, and it is also important for North America, because only by working together can we address the great challenges we face. We will also follow up on our discussion on Afghanistan. NATO will continue to adjust our presence in support of the peace process. This will be done in close coordination with allies and partners. So once again, Mark, it's great to have you here and uh, welcome. Good. Thank you, Jens. I want to once again thank Secretary General Stoltenberg for his superb leadership of NATO. You've done an outstanding job and we greatly appreciate it. I look forward to the chance today to speak with you and uh, Ambassador Hutchison to talk about all the many issues you discussed uh, to follow up on a very successful virtual uh, ministerial meeting we held last week. So we'll be discussing everything from Afghanistan to uh, COVID response to the important issues. Also, uh, it means improving NATO readiness and then continue to urge all of our allies to meet their target goal of 2% of GDP. Uh, we've moved a good distance here in the last few years, but there's much, much more we need to do to ensure our collective security. So. Uh, as you know, the United States remains committed to, uh, to NATO and to the alliance, and uh, I look forward to a very good discussion today to do everything we can to continue to strengthen uh, the alliance and our partners and our way forward. So thank you very much. Thank you.